Hi everyone, welcome to the Spring 2017 Orchid Update. Today is April 30th, 2017, and the weather outside is about 80 Fahrenheit and uh, mostly cloudy. Um, it didn't look like that um, when the, the day started. It looked like it was going to rain, but fortunately it didn't happen, um, so it's a good day to do an Orchid Update. Most of the orchids have been moved outside. Um, so we'll be doing a little tour of the grow space. Um, nothing major has uh, changed since last year, so it'll, it'll be a, a brief tour. But before we go outside, um, I'd like to share uh, with you what's in bloom. Um, I've kept all the blooming orchids indoors for um, enjoyment, but uh, I also have a few other ones within those that are a little more heat sensitive. Um, next, I'm going to um, do an update on uh, orchids in water culture. I can't remember the last time I did an update. I think it might have been a year ago. So we'll see what, uh, how are those doing. After that, I'd like to show you my little Neo collection that I've started to build up since the beginning of this year. Along with that, um, I have uh, a little short segment of some beautiful Japanese neopots um, that I've recently received. And then finally, we'll have just some random updates of various orchids, uh, namely things that are in spike um, and just some other major developments, I guess. Um, but all right, uh, that's the agenda for this update. I hope you guys enjoy it and stay tuned for more. Bye. Kicking off this uh, What's in Bloom segment is this No ID Broadlip Phalaenopsis. It's a little wonky, um, the spike that is, because I keep moving it um, from different places, trying to figure out where best to keep it, because it's, it's, I didn't stake it up, so it's kind of awkwardly grown. And I made it worse by moving it back and forth to different places, so. Um, but it's still looking really nice and I figured finally figured out what to do with this um, pot that I've um, gotten from Etsy I was trying to I, I forgot what I why I originally ordered it but um, I finally found a good use for it and I think it looks really nice with um, this purple pal and over here is this um, mini orchid, the Phalaenopsis Sing Yin Little Night Trinity, and it's um, pyloric. It's kind of hard to capture it on video because I can't figure out where, like, what's the best angle because it, it grows in a, like a little bouquet. It's looking nice, no fragrance. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on is my Phalaenopsis Cornu Servi. There's only one bloom on it. This is my first Cornu Servi. Flowers are pretty, it's pretty small. Um, when I first saw it um, open up, it was more red. Now it has, I can see it's a little bit more brown. Next to that is the, another species. It's the Phalaenopsis Javanica or Yavanica. And it's a very short spike. This is the only bud that's still good, although I think it's on its way out. There, there are a few other ones that are coming on. So uh, the spike was uh, developing right into the media. And I had a little hard time trying to keep it out because it's so short. But now it's at uh, a length that I can sort of rest it on the brim, the, the outer pot there. No fragrance as well as, as far as I can detect. But it's very waxy, it's um, semi-transparent, um, the part where it's like off-white. And the pattern is really, really nice too. But um, it doesn't open all the way flat. Um, it it kind of has a cup shape to it, which um, I guess is also interesting. But um, yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, I have another species, Phalaenopsis. This is the Tetraspis. I got this one from a member of one of the orchid groups that I belong to. I forgot who it was from, but I, I think it, it came from Puerto Rico. Anyways, um, it's not a C1, it's just a regular Tetraspis, um, so it's white, but every every now and then there's these um, bands of red across, uh, well, on this one it's on the uh, uh, petals, so that's cool. It's just starting to slowly open up today. Um, also no fragrance as far as I can detect. And over this, oh actually, let me go down here. This is a, um, it's a no ID yellow phalaenopsis. That's in bloom. There's another spike that it has, but it hasn't opened up yet. And on this table, we have a uh, Sidereus japonica. This one, um, I didn't really bloom it. I came with flowers. Uh, I just recently got. Um, the variety is Segyokumaru. Pretty sure I said that wrong. But anyways, um, I actually had one previously, but it's not looking really good. I'm thinking it might die, so I bought another one just in case, but I got one that's in the uh, in spike. And it's really weird, it does have a fragrance to it. Um, it's just exactly how Sam described it. It's a lemongrass scent, which is really odd. And um, the blooms here are kind of pointing all, in all kind of directions. Um, I think that might be due to um, having it shipped here while it was developing. And down here is another Sidereus Japonica. This one is the Hibana variety. Um, I think that means it's Alba. Anyways, um, it's in spike at the moment. I, I got the same time as um, the Seigyokumaru. The difference between that and this one is that the bands that you see here in this one, it's um, it's absent. So it's kind of like an alba form. I'm calling it an alba form, but the, I think the proper name is like Kibana something. I don't know, but that's cool. I'm just I'm just really liking these Sidiri because they stay so compact. Not like this is not the normal Sidiri Japanica. These are um, I think Japanese varieties. So they stay really small. I really hope this one makes it though. I hate to lose that because look how small it is. 
All right, so moving on. Here is another uh, species Phalaenopsis. This is really backlit. Um, I'm gonna try to move to see if I can make it better. All right, that's probably the best I can get it. Anyways, uh, this is the Phalaenopsis manii um, cultivar. It's a cross between two cultivars, uh, J, G, and Black. Uh, um, this one, one bloom here on the spike. No fragrance as well. I'm not sure if I like this one. I haven't made up my mind yet, but it's, it's something, I guess. All right, moving on. Down here, we have the IKEA uh, No ID Phalaenopsis. A little bit different than the one we just saw in that the form it's much rounder and it has a little more substance to it uh, no fragrance there's a side branch right there as well and down here we have a uh, this is the first time it bloomed for me um, TPS cherry wine new berry. A couple of people on Facebook have this one, but it's um, I, I don't know if it's miniature or not, but it's it's pretty small now, and I don't have a lot of red phalaenopsis in my collection. This might be the first one. I I can't remember. I'm not counting the Tetraspecy one because I've never. I don't think I'll ever get an all red bloom. But anyways. Oh my gosh, there's the melee. Oh, that's taken care of. Um, anyways, um, it has this light fragrance. It's not super powerful, but it does. And the cool thing is that the blooms on it are super flat. Bring this down so you can see it better. Yeah, it's really, really flat. But I got this one from uh, Carter's and Home sometime last year, mm, late last year. And moving up, here is a No ID Haloric White Fowl, and this one is really a, um, a true miniature because uh, the two leaves that I've uh, developed during my care. It's never actually gotten bigger than the one um, previously. Losing one of the leaves though. But um, yeah, the blooms are just fantastic. The lip is basically another petal. It's very symmetrical. It's not flat, but very symmetrical. No fragrance. Moving over here is not a mini. I think it's one of those medium or regular size Phalaenopsis. That's a TTPS Ox Golden Sands. And last year it didn't bloom really well for me. And this year um, it's marginally better. I only have four blooms. But uh, it's okay, the color is really, really nice. And down here, I don't know if this is gonna um, bloom or not, but there's a nubbin um, right above um, the leaf from the previous spike. This previous spike, it's, I assume it would fade already, but it, it's still green. It's been green for a long time. But yeah, there's a node there, so I'm hoping that it will bloom. Or I'm hoping that it's a flower spike and it will bloom soon. But I don't know, it seems like it's growing very slowly. It might be just the nature of the genus. Across from that, um, this is not in bloom, but I'm keeping it here because it's very um, difficult to keep. This uh, Dendrophylax lidenii. 
aka the Florida ghost orchid, the one that's endangered and um, very difficult to keep. These are little seedlings actually and um, I bought them in a flask. Uh, I think they're a little bit too young to be deflasked but um, unfortunately during, in the transport the medium got really mixed with the seedlings so basically it was um, just engulfed in the agar and so I was um, recommended to remove them and deflask them well, actually some of them said to replate them, but I don't have the equipment or stereo environment to do it, so I just uh, deflask them. I initially had placed it in a um, little glass cloche that's kind of like semi-enclosed, and um, gotten the humidity high uh, to about 90 something percent. But um, they look like they're doing okay. Some of the, uh, the biggest two here, I think that's basically that's all that's going to survive. Uh, the root tips are actually growing, so it's pretty, I'm very hopeful that these will make, pull through. But um, they're cool nonetheless. I got this little terrarium yesterday on sale. I thought it would be perfect for them. So I'm misting it every 12 hours or so, or twice a day. So I'm hoping they'll pull through. Alright, so moving on. This is my Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory. It's not the Leodoro that uh, everyone in Europe seems to have great access to. This is the closest thing that we can get here in the States. This is the um, Babo, I think, is the clonal name. Yeah, Babo. Um, I can't really tell the difference between this one and the Leodoro, but I don't have one uh, an actual live plant of the Leodoro to compare. But it's still nice. Um, when I first got it, only there was only one bud, and this one it opened, and it looks like today it's um, about to finish up. But I got this one. It's very big. It's very fragrant. Um, I don't know if I would call that. Pleasant, but um, I mean, there there's a few hours where it is nice, but then it changes into this awful smell that it smells exactly like my ambonensis. But um, yeah, there's a, a few hours where it smells very pleasant, like like a like a violacea or something. But um, other than that, um, I could do without it. The smell. The color is a little bit washed out, it's not uh, due to the camera. Um, it hasn't been open for a few days now. So, um, it used to be a little bit stronger. And right behind that is um, another Sidere Japonica. This one, if you recall, I have a uh, Minmaro Shima. Unfortunately, that one died recently due to crown rot. Um, I, I was just, I left it in the rain for too long, too wet, and then um, it got into the crown somehow and brought it everything. So here's my replacement. It's actually a little bit bigger than my other one, and I'm keeping it inside to keep a, a closer eye on it. So hopefully it'll, um, it'll do a lot better than my previous one, but yeah. And lastly, this is an older Phalaenopsis that uh, is featured in the past already. It's uh, no ID. It's a mini Phalaenopsis, and it's been in bloom for quite a while, since sometime in February. And since then, since I did the uh, "What's in Bloom" video, then. Um, it added a few more buds to it, so it's strange that this bike did a almost a 180 degrees backward. I don't know how that happened. I didn't really move it or anything, but anyways, um, it's a nice bouquet of foul mini foul blooms, and I think this one is a true mini. I don't think it's gonna get any bigger. 
but we'll see. All right, that's um, a wrap on my orchids that are currently in bloom. Pretty disgusting. I guess I better clean it before we continue on. So just a quick overview, uh, everyone seems to be doing well in the water culture method. Uh, most of these are full water culture. Um, I don't really do semi um, just because I don't really remember what day and such. Uh, on, well, sometimes it happens uh, only because I forget to fill up uh, the water because it dries out and then it becomes semi water culture. For the most part, it's full. Um, all right, well, I'll just go through each one. Um, this one is a, a Phalaenopsis Cornu Servi Red, and this one I think might be on its way out. Um, it has uh, lost all of those leaves suddenly, I don't know why, um, when it was in traditional media. So I unpotted everything and uh, left it in water culture. Um, then more leaves dropped off and then this one last one here it's very leathery and dry so I don't really know what to do about that one it might be on its way out but that's the only one that's not doing so well uh, moving on this is my um, LC tropical song I think and um, it's doing good it's working on a new growth right down there and has a pretty extensive root system um, so much so that it uh, basically has conformed to this, the shape of the container so it's doing really well and over here is um, that disappointing path that um, this is my first path that I converted to water culture and incidentally my first path period um, it was uh, set to be blooming but then it blasted the bud for some reason I'm not really sure I was working on a time-lapse too so that was really really upsetting but um, you know what can you do uh, it is working on a new growth right now um, at a rate that's much faster than I remembered I mean, it was in traditional media and it has stopped doing that thing where it just grows longer and longer and sends out the roots like above the media so when I was cleaning this I noticed that there was a lot of roots that are developing under the water line so that's pretty good it's not like sending up here well there is one up here but that's basically where the, the um, 
the water line is. And the only, I think the only reason why it's pointing upward is because it was trying to follow the leaf um, that was growing there, but the leaf had uh, shed. Uh, only uh, there was a remnant of it, so I removed it. So hopefully it'll go back down to the media, or it probably will like dry out and die if it stays like that for too long. But you can see here, there is new roots developing underneath the water. And look how far the crown goes. That It goes all the way down here. That's how it was growing when it was in traditional media. It just kept growing longer and longer and longer, which I don't think it's normal for fats. But anyways, um, it's doing well. It's growing, putting a new uh, growth, so I'm happy with that. Moving on, this is my um, Phalaenopsis inscriptiosinensis, and it's working on a spike right now. Right there. And the spike on this side that bloomed previously, um, I think it's elongating, but it's going into the um, container uh, towards the water. So I better watch out for that. I might have to change um, containers or something. Then over here, this is a uh, variegated Zygonesia Cynosure Delpha piece. I recently converted into water culture. It's very, very mild, marginal um, variegation at the, the um, tip there of the leaves. But um, this is the only mature pseudobulb that has ever developed, um, not just for me. I think it's a very, very young plant, but as you can see down there, I hope you can, there are two new growths or some sort of nubbin, or there's two new nubbins there. And over here is my um, Phalaenopsis michaelitzii. It is working on a spike right there. It's moving pretty quickly and I think I saw a bud forming. So I look forward to seeing that. It's a bit yellow, I don't know if that's because it's black in fertilizer. I might consider putting in a little bit of uh, fertilizer in the uh, the water there. But moving on, this is my tropical pointer. It's working on a new growth right there. And a couple of roots. Over here is my little baby Phalaenopsis. Uh, Watanabe number 15 or something. I forget, I should check back old videos, but it's moving right along. Over here is my Phalaenopsis um, Marie. Um, for the most part, it looks like it's recovering fine. Um, I neglected to fill up the water level, so some of the younger, shorter, roots that are um, just coming out. It never uh, got any water, and so the roots in there, when I was changing, I noticed that were really, really desiccated. So I just have to be careful next time to make sure that it doesn't get, um, the water level doesn't get too far below. Um, but other than that, it's working on this new leaf. It's very shiny, it's looking good. And this is one of the first uh, few orchids that I converted. This is a Potanara Walnita Char uh, Plum Bread. It's the biggest pseudobulb that I've gotten to eat. So that's good. Uh, over there is my Path uh, Della Natii. And um, it's just growing, I guess. I have to be careful with that root that's hanging above them. Um, all the marbles. Oh, I forgot to fill up th uh, this with water. I have to remember to do that after this video. All right, but uh, moving on. This is my um, BC My Kai Louise. Uh, it's not doing that much, and the newest growth um, that developed over winter is just kind of like 
the same size as the previous one. So I don't really know about that. Um, it's moving very, very slowly, just like the mother plant or the plant that it came from off of. But um, it's pretty cool for, you know, the original suitable that had like just one and with no roots and everything. I managed to get these three. And up front of that is my path um, Spicer Rhianum. Um, this clump here is getting a little bit larger. The leaves are getting a little bit longer. All in all, it's doing well. Here is my Phalaenopsis or DTPS Lewisberry Chin Yo. Um, I didn't take care of this orchid really well because you can tell here that. The newest leaves are much, much smaller than uh, were developed at the nursery. Um, but the roots are going crazy. It's growing like in every which way. So maybe next leaf will be bigger. Uh, here is my um, Calia amethysoglossa variety cerulea. And check out how long this root is. Just keeps going and going. Not that many roots in the um, the water, but it is growing. I, I see a couple, but not like this one. It's kind of strange. But yeah, it's also growing very slow. I don't see any like new growth or something. I had a Catalia amethysoglossa before, but it died. It also didn't do anything for a while, and then it just died. So I gave up, but I, I want to try this one because the this really a variety is really nice. Uh, back here is, um, I never say, I remember the, the uh, shorthand for this, what this uh, is. But it's a uh, Melinda Marie Blue Moon, and it's um, growing pretty well. Um, all the roots are pretty good. There's one that's growing right there. The suitable that bloomed previously, um, it doesn't look too great. It's not. It's so small. But this um, one that's coming out, it's looking great. And over here is. Um, really really tall is my Phalaenopsis venosa. Spike is doing something at this node uh, right there but it's also turning brown at, or yellow at the tip so this might be a cakey or something. This leaf develop is super small. Maybe it's adjusting to water culture or something but look at all the, those roots. They're all viable. I haven't lost any since I've converted to uh, water culture. And I keep the water level pretty high. So, yeah. That seems to be the same experience with all these orchids that I don't lose a lot of roots. They just kind of like, they don't grow too fast but they don't die either so it's it's kind of interesting but uh, moving on to this one it's my most expensive hybrid that I've gotten um, after I passed my board exam um, I'm happy to report that, that this one is developing a spike if I can get it in focus probably as good as I can get it but it's pointing down into the um, the water. I had it previously in this much, much smaller pot or glass vase. Um, but since I've noticed that the, um, the spike here was touching the side, um, that kind of alarmed me. So I switched it out to a bigger pot, but it's, it's heading towards the water. So that's a little concerning. I just have to keep a close eye on that. But the blooms on this one is um, very very pretty. It's um, kind of waxy white background with uh, spots. Um, this is surprising to me because this is um, 
Gigantia is one of its parents, so I'm expecting it to develop very slowly. I was not expecting a spike this year at all, but uh, I'm totally not complaining there. So, super yay. And the news, um, Orchid to be converted to water culture is this frag. It's actually my first frag too. It's a frag pink panther. It's a um, primary cross of um, Schlemiae and Fisheriae, or I don't know what that is. Anyways, um, I want to try this out and see if it works since I'm having a good um, result from the uh, paths. And right away, um, I see a lot of mold developing. It's, it's this, this thing about water culture is like when you first convert it, um, all kinds of bad stuff happens like mold and like weird rot, root loss and that sort of thing. But um, it gets better over time. Um, also the water gets um, progressively clearer with each um, change. And here, um, there is a new growth over there. Um, and that's not because of water culture, because I just uh, converted it yesterday. Um, I actually recorded the process, so if you want to take a look at that, um, I am going to put the clip in here. You guys enjoyed that little demo of how I convert orchids from traditional media into water culture. And so we move on to the last orchid in water culture. This is my um, Phalaenopsis. Well, in the past, I've always called it uh, Phalaenopsis Sogo Vivian because that's what the tag said, but uh, when it bloomed, um, it does not look anything like a Sogo Vivian. And um, it's all, um, all white. So I think this is, um, I'm pretty sure this is a Phalaenopsis amabilis type two. It's type two because the variegation of the yellow streaks occur in the center of the leaf. And I wanna say um, this orchid is doing pretty terrible. As you can probably tell by the droopy leaves. Um, that happened because all the root died. Um, I was changing out the um, water and cleaned out the rock um, a couple months back and I forgot to refill it with um, water um, when after I was done and so I left it out for maybe maybe a little bit more than 24 hours and all the roots just like completely desiccated so when I put it um, back in water all of them rot so now this is what we have left which is hardly anything um, so and it tried to bloom and um, I didn't feel like it was the right time to do so, so I pulled off the polina and um, let the flowers fade quickly and, and recycle up all the nutrients. And so this is where we are now. We are in recovery again. Being a Phalaenopsis amabilis that's variegated seems like it's a very hard uh, species to keep because I killed one uh, in traditional media. 
so this might be a second one that I um, will kill, but who knows, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. But yeah, that's pretty upsetting. Um, I left a spike up here because they, they, they tend to make um, cakeys um, from these old spikes. Uh, or at least from the ones I see at the nursery. They always have cakeys, either basil or um, uh, the ones that are on the flower spikes. So hopefully that will happen or maybe it will recover back. A long time ago when I purchased these two uh, Phalaenopsis Wadatabe number 15, um, I sort of had a thing in my head to do experiment to see if there's a, any difference that I can tell from doing water culture versus traditional media. So today is um, it's a little update on that progress. So far, it doesn't seem like there is any difference. Um, so, uh, but we have to say that uh, this one, the one in traditional media, started out a little bit bigger than the one in water culture, as you can see from the older leaf here. But right now, I guess there was a setback sometime in the last year and I don't really know why it was set back but now it's about the same size as um, this one in water culture. Um, this didn't have any setback it just grew very slowly. Right now they're kind of like neck and neck. So as far as I can say I, I can't really see any difference. And these two are the same plant. They are both LC Tropical Song they were purchased from my Orchid Society as a group project plant. And um, I also um, wanted to try, you know, a Cattleya type um, in water culture to see if they see, see any difference. The one in the traditional media here, um, it was a little bit bigger than the, um, the one that I started out in water culture too. So, um, the one in water culture has a slight handicap, but as far as I can tell, I, I, again, I don't really see any difference if I, if I factor in the size difference. They both have very good root system, as far as I can tell. I can't see as well as I, you know, the one in water culture for obvious reasons, but it, like from here, it looks pretty good. And they both are putting out new growth, like that one right there. And then this one, um, let's see if I can zoom in. So right there. So as of right now, um, it's not really conclusive it, which one's better. Uh, it might be just the same result, I guess. I don't know. So, um, you know, you sort of interpret that however you like, but to me, it doesn't seem like there's any difference. <laughs> So here we are outside looking at my new Vanilla Falcata collection or Vanilla Falcata. I want to te get technical, but um, we'll start off. And I'm going to try to pronounce um, the proper variety name, so um, forgive me if I say it incorrectly. Alright, so starting off with my Neo Vanilla Falcata collection is this, um, I, I don't know if this is a name variety or not, but it just says yellow. I got it from my local orchid nursery around here. And um, a lot of these, they're just sort of starting to come out of dormancy, so been, nothing major has happened yet, but this one I can see that there is a root tip that's slowly emerging. Last year it had a growth uh, between one of the leaves that looked like it could be a flower spike, but it then aborted. It's gonna turn brown. But this is just a, a single growth. It's pretty nice. And here is my very first uh, one that's uh, variegated. This one is called Higashi Demiyako. Um, it 
it was growing under the LED lights during the winter when I first got it. But um, I've just recently repot it, so I can't really tell if anything's underneath the media is happening. But it looks okay. Nothing too major to report. Here is a cross of two varieties. Let me get the tag out. Um, Kukakuden crossways Shiteno, and it's called Pink. Last year when I got it, it um, it was in spike, and as you can see, it's it's coming out of dormancy. And as far as I can tell, there's new growth right there. It's almost black. I might have to enhance that um, after I record it, but it's right there. I don't know if it's a new growth or a flower spike or whatever, but uh, yep, that's that. Over here we have, and I can't possibly say these, but I guess I'll, I should try. Kyo Bijin. This one I got from Peter Lin. I won it from an eBay auction. And if you look deep in there, that looks like to be a fire spike, and I've confirmed it with some people that are um, have have grown it. Uh, have grown neos for a lot longer than I have. And they said it's a power spike, but it stopped. It's been stalling. So hopefully it'll start back up again, but um, that's cool. This one's supposed to produce um, mm, kind of like orangey yellow flowers, which is kind of interesting because most of them are kind of white. Um, that's not a neo, that's an ascocentrum something cross from to breathe that I just recently got, so I'm really going to talk about that. But moving on, this little guy can you believe these are th um, the same species? But this is the uh, variety is Senzai, and it's what's called a bean leaf type um, neo. And I, I love these, um, and I think they just get this small or stay this small. And I actually got this is from the same plant or something, but it's separated when I repotted it. So now I have um, two individuals. I don't know, these are, I think people say these are not the best thing in the world to flower, um, but I like it just because of the leaves. Next to that, um, I've gotten a few neos that are gifted from a friend of mine. And uh, this is one of them. This is, the variety is Momohime. And I don't know anything about this one. Um, as far as I can tell, um, there's some new growth down there, but I think it stopped because this was a division and uh, I think it stopped as soon as it was divided. And as far as I can tell, I don't see any roots or anything. I'll put that back. Here's another one that I got um, as a gift. It's called King Kose. And there's a strange but interesting leaf pattern on it. It, it has these, um, I don't know if you call that variegation or not, but yeah, the um, there's definitely some sort of forward pattern on it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I also got this as a gift. This one is actually developing roots and establishing itself when it, um, after it got divided and given to me. Over there is a Senzai that we just talked about. And this one is an interesting one. Um, also, I got it as a gift. Oh, the name is smearing, I guess, in the rain. Um, this one is called Shitaki Rizu Sume. Oh, and there's a little spider there. Cool. I don't know what this is doing. That's kind of weird. Anyways, um, this uh, this is totally unexpected, but it actually is in spike. It's a it's a single division that I got, and um, it does have a ton of roots. But um, the strange thing about this flower is that it's um, spur, or yeah, a spur is split. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that is like. And 
uh, the leaf pattern is pretty interesting as well. It has variable lengths. I don't know if that's due to um, mistreatment or um, or just how it is. I, I don't know. But that's cool. I'm looking forward to seeing that um, bloom. Over here is another free gift from the same person. Um, the variety is Yegoromo. I'm sure, sure that's mispronounced. Uh, I think this one has marginal variegation, but because this is a very small division, I um, can't really see it. It's not as strong as like my Higashi Jemiyako, but um, I, from the pictures on it, I think there is some slight variation to it. But uh, this is one of the two that's not really doing anything since I've uh, received it. The other ones have just started to produce roots and establishing itself. So, you're just kind of watching that. And this one is... Let me bring it over here on the table, set it down. Oh, um, I want to share this with you guys because I'm kind of kind of proud of myself because I I'm hardly describe myself as handy or crafty but I managed to fix this um, little contraption used to hold Neil um, pots so you can display them sort of um, but yeah so two of these arms were uh, broken so I kind of soldered it together but uh, let me pull back so you can see it Yeah, so none of my Neos are big enough for the pot size that they'll, these fit, so um, I'm just kind of saving it later when my collection gets a little bit more mature. But yeah, let me put this out of the way. So we can have the stand to put my Neo on. Yeah, so this one is called Oh man, most of the names are weird. Yodo ma Yodo no Matsu. I don't know anything about this one, but this is the one of the ones that are establishing to mind right pretty well since I received it. There's uh, several new roots developing at the base there. Okay, put that aside. Let's put bring down another one. This one is I got this one from Seed Enge and it is called Jukai. It's another bean leaf variety and um, it was in dormancy but it's, as you can see it's breaking dormancy right now with uh, the roots are coming through. I like the leaves on this one. I think it looks a lot better if it has multiple growths but um, I bought this one, I think I won this one on eBay. This is my first, like, legit Neo that I bought. And, uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to getting myself uh, some bean leaf varieties. Alright, I had to stop the video momentarily because I was attacked by mosquitoes. I had to use some bug spray, but we're back with this one, uh, Rio Kuho, or whatever, <laughs> I don't, I'm trying. Um, but anyways, uh, another bean leaf variety, and it's, it has a new root there, and there's two new um, uh, growths coming at the base there, and there's this middle thing, I don't know what it is. I've asked some people about um, what that is, but I think it's way too early to tell. Could be another new fan or spike, but who knows. Yep. And that's that one. Bring this down. This is a small variety, and this one is called Say Ryu. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Sorry. Anyways, the, um, oops. 
the proper name is there if you know how to read that. This one is a gift from Ryan. And it has a really weird leaf pattern. It's all twisty and interesting. Okay, and then moving on, this is, and I have a tag for this one, this is also from Seed Ange, and it's, um, Biako. I believe that means white tiger, I'm not sure, but it, um, it has these, um, I think they're called tiger stripe variegation. I don't know, but it's cool as well. It's establishing really well since I've gotten it. Um, let me see if I can show you fruit porn action. That's all new. And I don't know if you can see in there, but there's some really nice root development in there. But yeah, that's the uh, Biako from Sirange. Here is another gift. I got a lot of gifts. Neo. But um, they're all divisions. Uh, this one is uh, Kinkujaku. And it's also developing. It's, a, it's at a weird angle because um, it's a side growth. So when you divided um, uh, all the roots that it had established previously falls onto one side. And so when I um, potted it up, um, the roots are coming in at a weird angle so that's why it's kind of like on a weird side like that but it's establishing roots there and this one um, if it gets enough sunlight the leaves does t turn to a, um, a golden color it's really pleasant um, so that's that one and the last two I recently got from a, um, a fellow member of one of the groups on Facebook and let's see if I can. Um, these are so new that I haven't potted up yet or haven't had a chance to this is a Kogane Nishiki and he has these um, yellow leaves it's really cool I'm told that um, this yellow pigment or whatever it comes out really uh, nicely like this if I give it sufficient sunlight which I will I, I guess I mean staying out here it, it, some parts of the day it will get a lot of sunlight direct sunlight so um, I, I bought it uh, with three growths but this one um, became separated so now it's technically two plants that's cool. And then here is a uh, Suruga Fukuren. And it has marginal variegation. Looks really cool. And I want to show you that one of the growths here, the new leaf, it's entirely yellow. I love when that happens. It, I think it's so cool. I'm not sure how that leaf is going to pull the sun size. But, um, it's pretty. I guess that's all I can say. Yeah, I need to get, I think I need to find taller pots because the roots are very long on these two. So, um, I might need to find some taller pots before I can repot them. But they are in amazing shape, and there's new growths too, new fans developing. That's very encouraging. So yeah, these are my uh, a few of my, or actually they're all of my um, neos. And I want to mention this because I, I completely forgot about this one, but this is um, my very first Neo Panidia Balcada, and the variety is uh, Kuja Kukunashiki. And um, 
this is the main growth that I when I bought it and it had crown rod or something I don't know but it brought out this uh, new growth and then it seems like it stopped and then we see this one over here which seems like it's it's growing so that's a good sign I, I really don't want to lose this one because this is my first snail so um, what I've done is that I, I've removed it from uh, the media that was in which is pure moss um, and I didn't really water it that heavily so I don't know what the why this oh why this main growth died off but um, I'm glad it's not completely dead so uh, I'm just leaving it here without any media or something to see if I can sort of prevent any additional rot so far so good um, new growth is seems like it's continuing on forward All right, so here's the unboxing video of my orchid pots, uh, neopots that I got in, from Japan from an eBay seller. Um, got here pretty quick, probably under a week. I, I went to the post office to grab it today. Um, so yeah, I was gonna give you a little bit on, um, of an unboxing video. I'm doing this uh, on the area rug here um, because they are a little bit fragile and just in case if you know I slip or something and they, they fall off the rug which should help with the impact and maybe not break it because they are quite precious. Alright, let's get to it. So I bought from this eBay seller before and last time they were packed pretty well, so I'm kind of expecting the same thing. I bought a um, Cymbidium pot and a Neo pot. Um, they're both made from uh, the Tenzin Studio. And let's see what we got here. So here's the Cymbidium pot, I'm assuming because they're, they're, it is bigger and the uh, neopot and then here's the other one all right let's take the box out let's open the neopot or the symbidium pot first looks like it's packed pretty well again Several more layers here. All right, so, all the we'll wrap it out of the way. Wrap next in tissue paper. And then it's wrapped in a styrofoam net thing with more paper. When I first saw the styrofoam net on the other the previous pot that I've ordered from them, I was pretty impressed. And there we go. It's a traditional Sympidium uh, orchid pot for ori oriental Sympidiums. But yeah, it's really nice. I like all the gold accents. And all the little drawing of, I guess, kids flying about in the bamboo grove. I don't know. But it looks really nice. All right, let's put that aside. Let's get to the, um, this is for uh, Neo. This one should be less ornate, but there is um, something about the design that's very distinctive um, that you can tell that's from the Tencent Studio. And I'll point that out in a little bit. This 
one is significantly smaller because it's for a NATO, not a Cymbidium. There it is. I rather like it. It's, this particular one, it's rough, it's not glazed all the way. Um, and this is the part where I said it's very distinctly Tenzin. It's really nice. All right, um, let me show you where I'm gonna store these because they're, they're, I don't think they're, they're good for displaying, you know, your plants at shows and stuff and competition or whatever, but I don't think they're the best thing in the world to be growing your plants in. I think um, clay might be a bit better because these are, I feel like they're too precious to be growing them all the time you know, with your plants and your water and your fertilizer and all of that dirt and grime. So I'm going to save these mainly just for display um, when they're in bloom or something when I bring to orchid meetings. So I'm keeping all of my orchid pots here in my bookshelf right along the stairs. There's not a lot of them so you can stay here. But um, what I really want to show you guys is the first one that I bought from this particular eBay seller. Um, look at that, it's another Tencent pot. And um, let me take this out so you don't see the glare anymore. I have to be extra careful with these. Because I feel like they're so fragile. Um, this particular one is very, very light. Um, I guess because all the mesh frame here and it's the walls are very thin too so it's very very light and all these uh, fine details here um, it's all hand um, painted so I imagine it took quite a bit of time to make this particular pot so yeah this is where I will stay Alright, so now we've come to the last segment of this update, which is uh, orchids that are spiking, or so just some major developments. Uh, first off, we have the Phalaenopsis cornu servi. This is the Flava variety, and it started spiking sometime in uh, winter under the LED panels, and um, it's moving right along. This new growth on my uh, Calia nobilior, with that ant on there, um, drinking the happy sap, I guess. Uh, I think this is a flower spike. Uh, I think it's a flower spike because it's pretty thin compared to new growths that I've seen in the past. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that um, new blooms from this species. It's my favorite orchid in my collection. This happened to be a Cattleya, which if it were any other Cattleya, I, I wouldn't care, but this one I really, really like. My Phalaenopsis Schillariana uh, purpurea that you saw in bloom in the first sequence of this update, uh, it's done flowering now, and um, the leaf that it developed during that Time when it was bloom, or when it wasn't blooming, it's um, it's a lot smaller than the previous leaves. I think I guess too much energy was uh, was diverted to developing um, the spike, so didn't have enough to uh, develop huge foliage. But uh, otherwise, it's doing great. Oh, here we have my. Cauda twinkle, Phalaenopsis cauda twinkle, uh, in spike, and the spike has two side branches, so it's gonna be a good flowering this year. And over here we have a flower spike that's developing on my Ascanopsis Irene Dopkin. Um, as you can see, I burn it pretty badly when I brought it outside but it didn't seem to care. The spike just kept on going. There's a, quite a bit of ants. 
I don't mind them because they sort of I feel like they clean up all the happy sap that would otherwise would grow like mold and stuff so I'm okay with them as long as it don't bite me or anything but anyways um, yeah I barely had a break between um, spikes like the one right below it as soon as I cut it off I saw another one and I was like oh that's pretty productive This is a nice bud developing on my uh, Phalaenopsis violacea, which is my very first fragrant orchid that I purchased. It didn't bloom any time last year, or it only bloomed once when I uh, since I got it. So I am very excited to see it bloom once more. Um, it's otherwise it's um, growing pretty nicely. I might want to consider repotting this. Um, soon. So I do not believe I've repotted since it bloomed for the very first time for me. And that was in 2014 or 15? I forget. But yeah. And over here on my plant stand we have a uh, foul and spike. It's a hybrid, no ID. And it's cool that the spike is just growing straight up. No stake required. Down here we have another Phalaenopsis that's spiking. Um, also no ID and I completely forgot what exactly is this particular one. Um, I think I lost the picture on it but we'll, we'll find out shortly. Um, right above there there's a newly acquired. I, I got this uh, sometime during winter. This is Phalaenopsis Fantastic Green Envy Judy SU. And I got it, um, it was just starting to spike, like, you can just barely see the nubbin. But now, it's gotten pretty long. Uh, that is my Psychopsis Mendenhall Hildos. It, it recently uh, shed its bloom. Um, and I did a thing where, I, I don't know if that was the right step but it seems like it is now. Um, I decided while it was blooming to repot the uh, orchid. It didn't seem like it, it cared either way because um, there's a new growth here that um, it keeps on developing so it didn't stop uh, after the repot. And I want to say that the spike is developing um, a uh, additional bud. So maybe the whole thing about not it not liking repotting is just I don't know that might be a environmental related issue I don't know I, I packed a um, pretty good amount of moss in there and with a little bit of bark so it's um, it's evenly moist or at least I try to keep it evenly moist. This is my BC Greenbird, and this year it developed three uh, new growths, and two of which had bloom. It's on its way out right now, but when it was just start, uh, when it was in its prime, these two little buds filled up this entire back patio at night with this fragrance. It's this, the fragrance is very familiar, but at a certain point, it does have like a menthol undertone, but the rest of the time it smells like sort of flower. I can't, I don't know what the name of it, but I, it's very, it's a familiar s scent. Alright, so this is my Phalaenopsis hyenensis, and if you squint your eyes really hard, you can probably see the spike that's developing. This is one of the, um, semi-deciduous Phalaenopsis, and for me, it didn't shed any leaves this year, or this winter. So um, I tried to keep it pretty evenly moist and warm in the uh, vivarium. So maybe that's that's due to that. But it's spiking now, it's my just, just really surprising to me. Cause look how many leaves it has. This one large one and this tiny one that I was under my care. 
and right here is another deciduous type this one did lose all the leaves on the uh, the stem there and uh, it sort of freaked me out a little bit but um, you know a couple months later it just developed these two so was, I guess it's part of the, its um, habit which is strange because I was told that these type um, will keep the leaves if you water them sufficiently and keep them warm or whatever this was kept in the same environment as the hyenensis and the hyenensis didn't lose any leaves but this one did I guess it may be the species I guess I don't know but um, what I want to show you guys is that pink nubbin that's developing on the basal part of the stem there I don't want to get my hopes up but it may or may not be a flower spike I don't know that's really cool if it is all right putting that back um, I don't think there's anything else this is um this is always in spike seems like this is the um, Te neophylum obtusum it's one of those leafless orchid I mean as soon as the the flower spike goes brown there's like other ones coming right up when I um, move it out initially all the uh, previous spike just to kind of die off but as you can see that there the middle one there's two new ones that came up shortly and over here this is my Phalaenopsis loei I just recently got this one this is also a semi deciduous type and it recently lost all the leaves but um, I was kind of worried that it, it might have been gone but um, I think what you can tell is that if you look at the stem if it's still green it'll push out another leaf like it is now but unlike my Phalaenopsis um, Wilsonii it the stem is black so I don't this one I think it might be a goner. I don't know. I'll probably need to get another one, a replacement. But I'm just keeping it, hanging it here, you know, like it is alive. Um, as far as the other one, um, it, just a lot of new growths, um, roots and leaves or what have you. There's nothing much to talk about them. So I'll conclude this update now. And hopefully the next time, it, it won't be too long, but uh, hopefully next time I'll show you guys some interesting blooms, especially in that one. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. That's the high nenses. Okay, um, thanks for watching, as always. Um, bye for now.